Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. First live episode of the year, and we're kicking this off with a mixing session. If you've never been to these before, we go live. We're supposed to anyway. <laughs> we're going to be better at this, but we go live once a week. Every single month, we also have a song contest where we actually get together. And at the start of each month, submissions are opened. The last week of the month, we all get together. We listen to those together on the live stream, all of those submissions. And then the awesome community of audio lovers and myself provide feedback on those songs. I then choose a winner. The winner gets a free mix and master. And if you choose to do so, it will be mixed and mastered, mainly just mixed live for everyone to learn from. So it's a really great way for you to learn sort of over the shoulder approach, ask questions as I'm going. And I'll do my best to try to answer those. Most of the time, we actually get through the mixes before the stream is even over. And of course, they're not, all of them are not completely 100% done, sign off on it or whatever. That's why you're given three revisions because I have to move kind of fast as we're doing these. But by and large, these are a lot of fun and we greatly appreciate everyone who jumps on. If you are new here, you're wondering, what's this channel all about? We do more than just reactions. We do more than just gear reviews. This channel actually exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. The motto around here, and it's been the prevailing motto over the last year especially, is that we can dream alone. We can even create alone, but together we can achieve so much more. With that being said, speaking of achievements, thank you guys. You guys rock. And by you guys, I mean all of the individuals who are here before you on this list. Now, if you have not found your, your place on this list yet, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to try to make 2023 the best year for Home Studio Simplified and all of the members as well. Uh, we got some really cool stuff lined out, and I really think it's going to just be a lot of fun. But thank you to our VIP members. As you can see, the list has grown quite a bit from where it was before. That's awesome. That's where our most value is at, is in the VIP membership. If you'd like to know how to become a VIP member, it's super simple. You can go to homestudiosimplified.com, go to the store tab, and there you can sign up for either a monthly or even a yearly option for the membership. And within that membership, you get access to royal, uh, royalty-free loops, you get access to multi-tracks, you get access to exclusive tutorials, only found on the VIP membership. And you also get an entire list. In fact, all of the raw track reactions that are done here on the channel are there commercial free. And you also get an extra 10 to 15 minutes. Actually, it's usually shorter than that. You get some extra content where I'm actually breaking it down for just the VIP members and giving my sort of two cents on the music production process, how we can then apply it to our own music and uh, how we can move forward from that mastered production there and really it's just a lot of fun there's there's a whole slew of other things in there you'll have to go and check that out but that's where you're going to get the most value because if you're on patreon only you're going to get a few free things just for joining patreon but i'm really not upkeeping that anymore you're also going to get a few free things for joining our youtube membership i'm going to try to update that more often this coming year but as of right now you'll get like the theme that i use in cakewalk uh, there's a couple different themes there i think there's a free um, EQ cheat sheet or something like that. But all of that stuff is there on the website as well. You know, there's also a ton of free stuff on the website. So go and check that out. As usual, we're going to be kicking off 2023, giving a huge shout out to our other sponsor and the main sponsor of the channel over the, the last few years, Warren Hewitt over at the ProMix Academy. And hopefully there will actually be audio with this commercial. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored in part by the ProMix Academy. The Pro Mix Academy offers affordable courses from mentors, world-class engineers, Grammy winners, and multi-platinum selling producers. And with the resources available on the Pro Mix Academy, you can learn how to create radio-ready mixes from the comfort of your own home studio. Most of the courses also offer multi-tracks that you can then add to your portfolio and begin to build out your business. Follow the link in the description of this video to head on over to the Pro Mix Academy today and start learning the skills that are needed to take your hobby or your business to the next level. Awesome. So good to have you guys back. Welcome to my little creative neck of the woods. This is my studio here. It's based out of my home, like most of you, uh, which is why it's called Home Studio Simplified. Now, given the fact that it's based out of my home, that does not limit anything that I'm able to do. In fact, 
a lot of my mixes have stood alongside some of the industry standard mixes. My course is actually featured on the Pro Mix Academy with multi-platinum engineers and producers. So just because you're in a home studio doesn't mean that you are negated, doesn't mean that you are hindered in whatsoever form or fashion. What this particular show is about, and especially today's rendition of that show, is to help you to learn some of the skills that you need to know in order to get your skills up to par so that you can actually start pitching to brands or bigger individuals. So with that being said, I want to jump in the chat here real quick before we even get started and say a big uh, hello to DJ Big Red 81 Thank you so much. He's our loyal moderator that shows up all the time. He's a great guy. Love him. Uh, Crackly Software, good evening to you, sir. Jonathan Hamlet, good to see you, and Happy New Year's as well. Uh, Jurgen is all up in here. So so good to see you, Jurgen. And Mob the Gamer. Man, I've missed some of these faces. Uh, Mark George, Happy New Year to you as well. Natalie Moore, good to see you. Kevin Grisham. Andre, good to see you guys. Kevin says, E. <laughs> uh, Eugene Smith Music, so good to see you as well. David Individual, this should be interesting, he says. Uh, he says, um, YouTube evidently wanted him to see this, so here it is. Send it, he says. Right on, we're going to send it. So good deal. Good to have you here, though, David. Appreciate you. Uh, Herky Acuff is all up in here. Jeremiah Peterson, good to see you guys. Man, you guys rock. Um, I feel like it's been forever since we've actually got to get together like this. Um, I did actually post a video, if you did not check that out, uh, where... Uh, it was around Christmas time where I said, you know what, for the rest of the year, I am taking a break. It was a much needed break. I feel like I'm energized. I'm not just energized <laughs> with energy, but actually creatively, creatively, <laughs> creatively, I also feel as if I've been energized and I'm ready to barge into 2023 uh, with all of my bearings and hopefully start creating even better content than we've created in the past year. And a lot of that, like I've already said, and I, I hate to go back to this again, but it, it's so true. A lot of that has been because of you guys. If it was not for your patronage, your support through the various avenues, whether that be merch, whether it be courses, whether it be affiliate links that you've used from my channel, if it was not for you guys, a lot of this would have went, it would have fallen flat on its face a long time ago. But how However, what I had seen last year, especially towards the middle of the year, as the channel started, started picking up steam and stuff like that, we, we knocked it out of the park as far as engagement and growth. So thank you guys so much for that. And that, yet again, that comes back down to you because you guys are the ones that are helping to share the videos. You're helping to talk about this with your friends. Um, and I wanted to just real quickly, before we even get into today's mix session which as you can see i've got it here up on the screen we're rocking ready to go um but before we even get into that i wanted to talk about some of the stuff that we accomplished in 2022 that sort of like a recap um for those of you that are here so uh in january we did the studio without walls contest and we had a huge giveaway we had an interview with mark letary uh, who was the guitarist for Snarky Puppy. Now he's doing a lot of solo work, which is awesome. By the way, if you haven't checked it out, go and check that out. In February, we did a huge song contest and giveaway. We uh, started the VIP membership in February. We kicked it off. We got, I think it was 30-some-odd membership signups right out of the gate, so that was awesome. We did the Kirchhoff EQ review and giveaway. There was many other things in February. I'm, I'm just going to kind of touch on some of the highlights. Um, we did an interview with Dave Kersner of, uh, we call him Squids. Um, he's from the IK Multimedia family with love. He's also doing a lot of good solo work. Check his re most recent album, The Traveler, out. you got to go and check that out. We did an interview in April with San JC. Awesome guy. Love him to death. And we also had our most viewed video in 2022 was Michael Jackson's Human Nature Raw Track Reaction. So thank you guys so much for that. Oh. Someone just lit the room up like a disco ball. If you've seen here in the background, you can see sort of the galaxy thing that's going on back here. That's because someone just donated through a super chat. So thank you guys so much for that. Who did that? Now, who did that? Eugene Smith. Thank you so much, brother. I greatly appreciate that. Let's give him a round of applause for that. Yes. 
Uh, Jurgen, I did change the room up quite a bit. Yes. Good deal. Thanks for noticing, by the way. It's little stuff like that, you know, that really makes the difference. I feel like whenever we're, uh, I, I was, I thought you guys were getting tired. I know I was getting tired of it, but I thought you guys were getting tired of seeing the same white walls behind me. And, um, I figured, you know what, why not? So, but thank you so much, Eugene Smith, for your generous $13.99 donation. Very cool. Thank you so much. I'm going to go in here and turn that off just in case. There we go. Thank you for lighting the room up like a, like the galaxy. You mean the world to me. Um, but with that being said, uh, I went ahead and turned it off. So if anybody else does that, that's the biggest benefit of having that is I actually know when people give super chats. Now, sometimes I would miss it before and I like to give people a shout out if they do that. So, um, so yeah, our most viewed video was Michael Jackson's human nature, raw track analysis. Thank you guys for that. But on top of that, we did the BG staying alive, which DJ big red 81 is all up in the chat telling me to do. Uh, we did Michael Jackson's burn this disco out the Beatles, Eleanor Rigsby. Um, we did the Eagles take it easy Prince. Let's go crazy. We did a live singing session with Mark Crowder. He's a, a wonderful, uh, Pentecostal apostolic musician here within the UPCI ranks. He's doing a lot of good work. He's helping people. Um, his, his ministry is blossoming and we're going to see more of him here on the channel. Um, we also did in June an interview with Jason Gibbons from JMG music. So that's very cool. Um, he actually created a lot of the plugins that we reviewed last year. Um, moving on to there's, I'm skipping over a bunch here, but we, we interviewed Brian Wampler, uh, last month. That was very fun. We got some cool stuff coming up with Brian Wampler soon too. I'm going to try to get him in the VIP membership area so that he can give you a specific VIP tutorial just for you guys. He said he was going to agree to agree to do that. But I want to also bring up the fact we had 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 52 live streams last year. So if we have 52 weeks in a year, that means we actually, we hit the mark. We had 52 live streams. There's 52 weeks in a year, if I'm not mistaken. So we had one live stream a week. Very cool. We had 52 of them bad boys. Um, there were many other interviews. There were many other people here on the show. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up, um, uh, Oh, as soon as I, we had so many Gibbs and Gibbons and all of this on the, on the show, but, um, what was his first name? If I wouldn't have thought about it just now, like it was like right on the tip of my tongue, Spencer. Yes. I was trying to find it real quick. And then it came to me. Spencer Gibb was on the show. He's the son of the late Robin Gibb of the Bee Gees. It was also our most watched uh, interview. So thank you guys for tuning into that. Um, and then also the podcast has been growing. If you guys didn't know I had a podcast, you need to go and check it out. Most of the interviews that are here on the channel, if you want to see a visual interview, that's great. Come and watch them here. But if you also are on your commute and you want to be driving down the road and you want to go through and, and check out something while you're driving, you can do that in your ears on the podcast app, whether it's Spotify, iTunes. Um, we even have a podcast tab on uh, the website where you can go and listen to it straight from there. Oh, yes. Mark George was on the show. Yes. We can't forget about our buddy Mark. Um, like I said, I'm leaving out a bunch of people because it would be, it would take a long time to go over everything that we covered in 2022. But I wanted to touch on some of the main things that uh, really stood out to me. And one of the, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me uh, from 2022 is just the amount of support, moral support that I got from you guys. Thank you so much. There were times when uh, seasonal things were happening. We all go through seasons. And I'm, I've always been very transparent, wear my feelings on my sleeve. So I would tell you guys like, hey, I'm not feeling the greatest. You know, it's not a sickness. It's just I'm not, I'm just down in the mouth. And the next thing I know, you guys would come up alongside me. You'd cheer me up. You'd send me memes. You'd do all kinds of crazy stuff. And um, I think that really helped me get through a lot of, of times where um, and it's usually like whenever you have your biggest victories is whenever like you have your biggest valley, like when you're up on top of that mountain, it's all great. It's like, yes, I've, I've reached the pinnacle of something that I wanted to accomplish. I've, I've achieved a goal. And then like, it seems like the next day, something just takes the wind out of your sails. And, um, maybe it's set up like that to keep us humble. Maybe God knew what he was doing. 
Um, either way, it's it's been a great year, and I greatly appreciate all that you guys have done. Uh, one of the biggest things that I seen was the growth here on uh, the channel, and it was back in October. No. Um, but it was before October. I can't remember necessarily when. January, February, March, August. Maybe it was August. It was around that time frame that we had our 10,000 subscriber celebration. We had Warren Hewitt on. It was a good time. We gave away a bunch of stuff. That was cool. And um, fast forward to now, we're sitting at 76,000 subscribers. Like I never thought we would grow that fast that quickly and yet again i owe that to you guys so that's some of the main things that i wanted to bring up today um and just sort of say in a formal way thank you i appreciate that so let's go ahead and hop over to the desktop here we're going to take a look at the song that we're working with today this is the november song contest winner we haven't even listened to december's yet so we're a little bit behind but we're going to get there um and you know, there's in times past, whenever we're behind, that usually means that's actually better for you guys, <laughs> because that usually means that we have like some kind of a song or a mixing contest so that I can get caught up for a month. Spoiler alert. Um, but with that being said, this is, uh, he goes as by old bell here online. So I'm not going to say his real name just in case. Then again, it may come up in the chat. I don't know. Um, but this is his song that he won and, um, let's go ahead and give a listen to a sort of where it's at now. Okay, so it doesn't really sound too bad. In fact, whenever he submitted it to the song contest, uh, the mixing that he had done on it actually sounded really good. So, <laughs> sorry, I got a phone distraction. Um, but yeah, and, th and that's part of the reason too. I mean, I don't, I don't pick the winners of the song contest based off of how well you've mixed them or how well they're mastered or. Um, how beautiful they sound a lot of times even a lot of times it's just based off of I will pick them based off of um, well it's a myriad of things but one of the main things that I, I will choose uh, a song for is because I feel like it has the most level of, of things that I could do to demonstrate to you guys basically teaching points so let's go ahead and uh, the first things first if you guys have been around here before you already know kind of my style, how I, how I work with things. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, first things first, bring all the faders down to their zero position. And I haven't done this in a while and I need to start doing it again, but I'm going to switch everything into mono. This is just going to keep the whole painting situation out of the, out of the uh, equation as a factor and going to allow me then to start doing what I need to do uh, in mono and then later we can bloom that back out to stereo. This is part of what I call my 15 step mixing process. Uh, it's not anything that you have to follow, but if you're wanting to get your hands on it, that's also in the VIP membership. It just basically helps you to get through your mixes faster and to be able to deliver them to a client with the full assurance that yes, this is definitely a finished mix. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest questions that I've seen over and over again. How do you know when a mix is finished? Well, if you follow my process, it's actually pretty easy to figure out when your mix is finished because you have it written on paper that it's finished. So very cool. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. Just making sure I got my chat up here so I can see you guys here in the chat as well. All right. So first things first. Um, ba -da -bum -bum. Art is not a competition. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I don't, I don't pick them based off of like the typical competitive, like, oh, this sounds so good. I'm choosing this one to mix. Like, why would I choose the best one that already sounds good to mix it if you've done a great job? 
No, I'm going to pick one that I feel like I can do the most for and also uh, display the most teaching points. So what I've done here is I have zeroed out all the faders, brought them all down to negative infinity. That means there nothing's coming through there. And as is typical, I'm going to start with the drums and I'm going to bring them into the equation first. I feel like if you can get a good drum sound right out of the gate, you can build around that as that I also feel it is the backbone. So let's go ahead and I'll hit play, which is pressing spacebar. I'm going to turn these up to like negative six. Okay. And the drums actually come in right here. Okay, so that was the little intro bells type things. And it's just labeled drums. So I'm going to change that. Okay, it's crash and chimes. Gotcha. So because those are both on the same track, I'll probably have to do some automation on those, which is fine. Okay, this track is actually a ride. Okay. Not sure. Was there a not a snare track in this? Or did I miss it? That makes me wonder if I missed a track or not. Let me uh check the files that were sent me just to be sure if my mouse would work uh kick timpani ride crash yeah i don't see any any snare okay that's interesting good deal okay i'm gonna go ahead and set the project to loop based off of the length of it and um Gonna come up here to where the drums come in. As you can see, the BPM is 75 on this song. Actually, that doesn't that doesn't sound right. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, now we can begin messing with it. And by that, I just mean getting the levels right now. I'm not doing anything crazy. Okay. Bring up the bass. Could probably turn those down just a little bit. Okay. Bring up the piano a little bit.
Okay, so it seems like the song is piano driven. So we're going to make sure that the piano and the frequencies of the piano are more accentuated than those of the guitar or the strings or other instrumentation. So the way that we're going to do that is first, we're still in mono. We still got the, the mix. Uh, this is basically just a rough mix of the faders only. And then we're going to basically go in here and start. <laughs> There's a picture of my coffee pot. <laughs> okay. There we go. And there it is again. And there it is again. Anyway, and it was upside down. That was weird. Anyway, so what we're basically going to do is we're just going to go in here and sort of check this out. See what we can do with what we can do. Uh, but but da da. Let me make sure that this. Let me turn that gamma down a bit. That's that's just a bit much. There we go. That's better. So let's go ahead and EQ this based off of what we see here. Bring it back into play. starting point. Okay, so the, the piano is definitely sounding much better. I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, it looks like I just froze up. That's cool. There we go. Every once in a while. Uh, for some reason, my mouse is just not wanting to work properly. It's like lagging on me. Anyway, um, so yeah, the piano sounded much better. Uh, Kev Gresham is wondering, am I going to stick with the same kick drum? You know, <laughs> it's funny you say that because it it's not really, I don't think, playing a good part in the song. Um. And I probably should address it now before I start doing a, a bunch of EQing. So the best way to do that here within Cakewalk is to actually just use the drum replacer. If it works, sometimes it does not work. I've noticed. Okay, so this little orange bar here, let me get my mug off the screen. This little orange bar here is going to effectively... Okay, now I've made the display a little bit too dark. Sorry about that. There we go. So this orange line tells it when to initiate. And this over here is going to tell me which kick is going to be replacing it with. So right now, if I was to bypass it, this is what, you, what we have. Let's solo it. Oh, it's not going to play it at all because I don't have it. Okay. Okay, it's not going to play it at all because it's not going to play it at all.
Okay, let's see here. Okay. Now, let's actually... Um, I wonder... Let me, uh, let me see if I can't. Just to kind of see. Okay, yeah, that definitely sounds better. Closer to what he was, I think, trying to get, but. That might be a bit much. Oh, well, you're very welcome. I'm glad you and your son are enjoying it. Yes. Now see, that sounds more like what I'm thinking it needs to sound like. And so, I have an idea. This is kind of a crazy idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, Let me do this. Let me delete that. I'm going to insert Addictive Drums 2. If you guys have been following the channel for a long time, um, oh, thank you so much, Eric. He just joined the membership as a lead engineer. Thank you so much. Uh, but it, as I was saying, if you follow the channel for very long, you'll know that I actually have been using Addictive Drums exclusively on all of my productions. Why? Because they sound absolutely stinking amazing. Um, okay, so now what I want to do... I'm going to use Melodyne. Wow, thank you so much. Eric says, this is the first time he's ever subscribed or donated to any YouTube channel. You deserve it. Dude, that is amazing. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. So now that it's inside of Melodyne, you, you might be thinking, well, what would you, why would you use Melodyne? Because, check this out. I can now go to select all. Okay, I've done that. And then go to, uh, da -da 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 -da. where's it at? Save as MIDI. Okay. Actually, I think I'm doing this the hard way, but that's fine. We'll, we'll let it roll. And then we will import MIDI. And we'll use the MIDI that we just saved to the desktop. Didn't work like it was supposed to. Okay. I think there's a way to... I thought there was a way to just like... Might be wrong here, but... Why is that not working? That's weird. That should be working. Okay, hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. I think there's a way to just copy it as MIDI events, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Let me make the screen bigger. That's wearing me out. I hate it when you do something like 150 billion times, and then you go to do it live, and it just doesn't work. Okay, so... Select all. Let me just try to copy and paste, see if that works. Nope, that didn't work either. 
Normally just clicking and dragging it down works. I don't I don't get it. Secretly, it's going to tell me that I need to upgrade. Or not upgrade, but update. I can't upgrade. I've got the, got the best one that's out there. So, copy, song, note, to note assignment. No. Okay, let me try this. And see, that's what I was thinking. Mabe. That's what I was thinking. Uh, okay. Let's, uh... Ah, there it is. Copy MIDI events. Hello. Okay, so now, what's going on? Okay, let me copy MIDI events. Let me remove region effects. Is it gonna do it this time? Maybe, maybe not. Like, really, what just happened? It copied like one little bitty. That's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robert forgot how to use Cakewalk. There we go. Good night. That was way too difficult. There. So now for each kick that's there, uh, it'll actually be triggering addictive drums instead of the other. So I've got my the kick loaded up that I wanted to use. No, I don't. I changed it for some reason. Uh, not that one. By the way, I loved addictive drums so much. Ooh. That one's a little bit too beefy. I think that I think that was the one I went with. Let's go with it. Okay, so I loved addictive drums so much that I ended up I have everything from them now. <laughs> Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, but it's actually been routed to the toms instead of the kick. No big deal. So we're just going to select all. If it actually lets me. Okay, and then we're going to move all of these down. To the kick. Okay. Let's see what the original sounded like. Yeah, see, it's got, it's just a little flat, just boop, that's it. And so literally what I've done is I've just augmented the kick here. And instead of making it uh, sort of like a flaming boop, this is more of a... So it's got the punch now. Beautiful. I like that much better, yes. Okay. 
now I have to turn that kick down, but it's punchy. Good deal. Okay, so we got the piano sounding uh, a little bit better. Um, I shaved off everything below, what is that, 75 hertz. So that's going to give room for my, uh, my bass as well as for my kick drum. And I'm going to actually set that slope a little bit less aggressive so I get more of the low end of the piano. It's not going to completely uh, clutter up all that low end, so I should still be all right. Let's go ahead and... Hear how that sounds. Ooh, Mobby's on it. It's a good idea, Mobby. I don't know how we dubbed you as Mobby, but it's, it's happened. You are officially Mobby now. So in Cakewalk, if you're using MIDI and your buffer levels start to get out of whack or something happens, to where your buffer just suddenly doesn't want to work anymore, which is, you get what's called dropouts. And so, as he just pointed out, if you freeze it, it actually turns it into audio and you won't have a dropout anymore. So, let me change this to kick. Somewhere along the line, I must have hit caps lock because that's... There we go. Now my OCD is better. And just for keeping things aesthetic, I'm going to change that back here. Okay. Um, Eric, if you want to freeze a track, uh, it's this little, let me bring up a little bit bigger on the screen here. It's this little icon right here, right next to my head. And you can do this to any track. And what it basically does is any of the plugins that are on that track, anything that you've done to that track, it folds it down sort of as like a, a non-destructive bounce. So it bounces it down to an audio file and all the stuff is now baked into that sound. But it also removes the strain off of your CPU because now it's all baked in. It doesn't have to no longer process that every time it's playing. So it's actually, it's a great way for you to save a lot of CPU usage. Um, yet again, a lot of this is covered in the VIP membership, especially um, on the Cakewalk documentation that's found in there. So, but yeah, so we've essentially froze it uh, thanks to Mobby's suggestion. And, um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mob says, I learned most of what I know from you, and now I get to remind you of the functions, especially when you've been off for quite some time. Um, it really was a good break, though, guys. I, I thank you so much for understanding. Um, okay, so let's go get back into it here. Okay, we're going to make sure that the low end on this here is shaved off. As you can see, it's got a lot of low end that doesn't even need to be there. Let me get my head out of the way. So we're going to keep that. Shave out a little bit of the low end mud there. Take out some of the honkiness and boost a little bit of the highs. Okay, we're gonna copy that over here and then we're gonna make a few adjustments just to make sure that they're not completely the same. Okay, so for these acoustic guitars, uh, these are mainly just a supportive element. So with that being said, um, I don't have to worry about really how natural or how real, quote unquote, that they sound. 
Um, but I'm mainly just trying to worry more so about uh, are they supporting the song like they should. So one thing I noticed is they're very attacky, for lack of a better term. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to use Spiff. This is a drum plugin mainly, but you can use it for a whole lot of things. And um, we are going to actually just find a preset here. Electric guitar pick attack. Acoustic pick to fingers. This should help us. Uh, we're going to solo this real quick so that we can hear it in action. So when we put it back in, hear all that attackiness. Okay, I like that, but it's also taken out a lot of other stuff. I just mainly want the, the pick attack. I don't want to overdo it now. <coughs> There's other things that I could do. I could actually just use a de-esser, um, which I did for years. But this is actually just going to, it's kind of expensive, the plugin is. Um, but the reason you pay for more expensive plugins is because they make your job easier and you can do things faster. And so I've taken care of this a lot quicker. This is bypassed. And with. Okay, so I think that sounds better. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this over onto the next track. And this should give us a little bit more of a pleasing sound in the mix here. Okay, that's definitely sounding a lot better on the guitar side of things. It's not quite so attacky. Um, I will definitely come back and address some other issues that I'm hearing there later. But as of right now, we're just going to go ahead and kind of keep sliding along here, moving along. Let's go back over here to the kick. And I want to get these drum elements a little bit more dialed in because I feel like they're, they're lacking a little bit now that we brought in more of these frequencies, which is understandable. So first and foremost... up a little bit more. I can shave a bunch off of that low end. Okay, go back here. Now I do have a drums bus. So this is where I'm going to do a majority of my 
broader strokes. So right now I'm just kind of EQing these things based off of how I feel like they should sound uh, individually, but then as a whole, I'm going to be a adjusting that much differently. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that over make that easier. We can adjust that later if need be. And then the kick, I'm going to go ahead and just do what I normally do. That's another great thing about using something like addictive drums is because you use it a lot and it's sample based, you can pretty much do the same EQ moves every single time it's going to come out right because you're not using a different mic. It's not a different room. It's not a different, there's just so many great reasonings behind all that. Okay. Okay, I definitely improved that kick quite a bit. That's what I was looking for right there. All right, so I haven't sent any of these yet to the drums bus. I'm going to do that now. Now they're all going to be routed to the drums bus, which is then going to allow me to have a better... Uh, handle on everything as a whole. So I love using the tape saturator that's here within Cakewalk because if you have harsh sounding cymbals, it really helps to sort of round off the edges of them, make them not quite sound as, as tinny as ear piercing. And it just sort of, it gives them this lushness that I think, um, nothing else really can. Likewise, it's awesome because it makes your kick sound a little bit more analog, a little bit more uh, old school, if that's even a word. <laughs> um. Okay, now I'm just setting my parallel compression for the drums. So this is without any parallel compression. I'm going to bring it in. There we go. That gives me a little bit more of the attack uh, and the, of the kick, a little bit more of the beater head. Good there. That's going to allow me to turn the ride down a little bit. Yes, still in mono. We're getting closer, still need some help, but we're definitely getting closer. The kick has a transient, but listen to the parallel mix in. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so let's bring her back. I'm going to actually bring this back here, and we'll just go right here. That'll make things easier. Okay, so one thing that I'm, I'm wondering about is the phase relationship on these acoustic guitars.
So it's it definitely there's something going on there. Definitely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert um, M Auto Align. I'm going to set this to uh, da, 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 guitar. Set this one to guitar. Now we're going to go ahead and listen to them and analyze the two. Much better. So essentially what happened is the guitar, it sounds like, was recorded with two different microphones. One of the instances that happens with two different mics is you have uh, phase issues because phase equals time and so usually one of the capsules of the microphone is either too far away or not close enough or whatever it might be um, with that being said um, when you align those capsules properly you'll get a great acoustic sound with two microphones typically speaking one microphone can still produce a great sound but um, when you have two mics if you can do something like we've just done now with M auto align you can actually get those two to sync up and sound a whole lot better. If you, if I was to uh, disable this plugin, listen to the before and after. So this is disabled. This is enabled. Just made it come alive. It sounds so much more natural. much so that I can actually turn it down a little bit. Awesome. Okay. Now we're starting to get somewhere. So now that we've got a majority of the EQ moves to where they, they really do sound good together in and of themselves in mono, now we get to do this glorious thing of splitting these up into stereo and we get to bloom it out. This is my favorite part because you get to hear all the hard work that you've just done, what it's doing for uh, the mix itself. Got a couple of questions coming in here and we always do like to answer questions as we're going. Uh, Andre wants us to analyze the waveforms in and of themselves. So this is the waveforms of the two acoustic guitar tracks that we just did that to. Yeah, and it looks like, it looks like, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, see the timing issue there? Uh, this might have even been, this might have even been one track duplicated. Which either way, we've got it to sound better now. But knowing that, um, based off of the waveforms, it might actually make me treat them a little bit different too. Like say for instance on this one here, I might actually put some saturation just to kind of bring things actually, you know what, let me do this. Instead of saturation, I will add, yes, front doll. No, unichannel, yes. Okay. So the reason I did that though is because if they if it was a duplicated guitar track, you've got to do something to make it different. So with that being said, we've got to do something. And in this case, using uh, the things that were at our disposal, um, we have to to change it up in some way. And we did by inserting the Una channel. Uh, Mob is getting on to me as a Waves affiliate. I should be using. 
more waves stuff. You're right. Um, I actually could have achieved the same. Uh, oops. Let me instead of deleting it, let me bypass it. I could have achieved the same thing with waves plugins. Definitely. I think honestly, what's sort of inhibited me um, from using a lot of waves here lately is just the fact that I haven't really had time to dig into them enough. And when you have this many waves plugins, it's hard to be like, okay, I'm going to uh, use this. Um, but you know what? An API would actually sound really good on this, I bet. Let me try an API. Jonathan Hamlet. Sorry to have to see you go, brother, but it's been good having you here. So APIs are great um, for acoustic guitar. Let's see if I can dial something in that I like with, with just using this. Okay, you're right, Mob. I actually prefer that sound to the one of the, uh... to the Unichannel. Although that's a great plug-in, by the way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shrink these waveforms a little bit here and make them look a little bit nicer. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and bloom this out to stereo. Why not? So I've got the, uh, these sort of strings slash piano type things here. These are all, uh, these are stereo files, so we're gonna make them left and right. And then the crash and chimes also came as crash right and crash left. I think I have them reversed. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna make them 50-50. And then uh, the client, in, in this case, well, I say the client, the winner <laughs> actually wanted the um, this track here to be the left and this track to be the right. So if I'm not mistaken, yeah, temp, timpani and chimes, he wanted on the right. So that's good there. And I just like having them going left to right because that's just aesthetics for me. And then, um, uh, Let's go ahead and bloom this out to stereo. Are you guys ready for this? This is going to be awesome. Here we go. Beautiful. saturation on that bass guitar and let's see if we can actually get access to the BB waves. The BB, I don't know if I have access to that yet. I think I have to go in and enable that.
down just to make it a little bit more consistent. We'll put the CA2A on there. Set it to limiter. Okay, so now I really feel like the only thing, other thing that this mix is starting to lack is, is space. And I think we can achieve that, honestly, with, um, with, good, with some, some good reverb. One of my favorite reverbs here as of late has actually been uh, the Abbey Road reverbs. And I'm going to choose Abbey Road plates for the small, for my short room here. And somewhere in the chat, if I go back and look, old oh, Mob the Gamer's already done the equations for me. Or, I'm sorry, that was, no, that was DJ did the equations. And I've done lost him. But that's fine, because I need to show you guys where to find those equations anyway. The cool thing, though, about the Abbey Road reverbs is you don't really use equations uh, it's more by ear which I think is it's not as right so to speak <laughs> but it's also um, it, it just is because you're using your ears uh, the next one I'll go with is chambers and I'm actually going to put this one on uh, when it comes to the large I'm going to actually use but where is it? The Eventide 2016 Stereo Room. This was a free plugin that came with. Let me get this back up here. This was a free plugin that came with um, 1.2. Okay, gotcha. Better get that down before I lose it again. Anyway, if you are a. Um, Focusrite owner, they have what's called the Focusrite Collective, and every month they usually either have a sweet deal or they give you a free plugin. So, okay, so I'm going to make this 100% wet. Uh, we got our reverb set up properly. Florida Panthers 2020, good to see you, buddy. And then here, uh, 800 and 400. Okay, so this is. Yep, that only goes up so far. I think I'm just going to use my... Oh, that's the delay anyway. I didn't want that on. Yeah, that's what I thought. So see, this is not... You don't really have a... You don't really have like a, a set number. Like we would normally, as we've pulled up in the past, what we do is we, um, we pull up the reverb and delay calculator, which you can find on my website, and that will tell you pretty much where... You need to set things. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to use our ears. which It's okay to do that. I love the plates too, though, because look, it has this drive and analog section. I love that. It's amazing. Okay, um, but up but, uh, bass cut. I always do a bass cut and a treble cut. This is actually what they would do a lot of times at Abbey Road. It's the Abbey Road reverb trick, as they've called it. And then you have different plates that you can select from. Okay. So that's kind of a good starting point anyway, I feel like. And we'll just kind of dial that in. I think I'll dial it in with the acoustic guitars. We'll kind of go from there. So we're going to insert a send here to the short room. OK, 
Okay, let me bring both of those up. And to the medium plate. We're not going to put this these guitars into the long haul. Um, or the stereo room, I should say, as of yet. Let's uh, let's check this out. That already sounds a whole lot better. I think B sounds best. Okay, so when it gets to that last low chord there, the the turnaround chord, it sounds like it's kind of getting muffled a bit. So I'm going to take the body out of it by adjusting the EQ. Let's see how that sounds. Much better. I feel like that's just going to kind of give a little bit of the body. And honestly, it sounds good right where it's at. Okay, I think that actually made the... It made the short reverb just a bit too much, so... Much better, right there. Some 
reason my camera keeps disconnecting itself. That's awesome. All right, now let's bring in some reverb on some other elements here. Now, what I've noticed, typically speaking, over the years that I've been using Cakewalk is if you in, insert a reverb while it's playing, it messes the timing up and it won't sound right. But once you stop it and you go press play again, it'll come into it. Okay, now for the strings portion of this, these are going to go to the long haul. This is going to help to push them back into the background a little bit better. And hopefully give them a little bit more separation from the other elements. that work. Now let's put some of that on our drums here. Yet again, we're going to stop it. I like to start at negative six on the send. Okay, so that's really helped to bring a lot of space into the mix and helped it to sort of, I mean, it just came alive. If I was to mute these reverbs, let's hear it before and after. So this is before the reverbs were initiated. Doesn't sound bad. All right, now let's bring them in. bass is sounding really good I'm liking the level of it and everything so um, I think now we're actually we're we're at a point where we can go ahead and start bringing in some vocals um, that is what I think is these synth tracks here it's supposed to be kind of like a pad slash strings Could be this timpani that you're hearing too. All right, now I can go ahead and start bringing in some vocals, I believe. Um, 
Whenever he sent me this, the only vocal that I had was this one here. Always there. And he said it was like a blend of like, I believe it was three different microphones that he was singing into at the same time, which is great uh, for an effect. But if you're going to be trying to mix it, you really need just one microphone to get that vocal up front. Now, I'm not saying you can't break that rule. By all means, go for it. Um, but I needed just the, the one vocal track. And so I found that. Uh, actually, rather, he sent it. And this was from an SM58. You're always there. Beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and work on just that main SM58 vocal track there. And then we will start uh, building out from that. So let's go back here. And we're going to... Oops. We're not going to move that, that's for sure. Let's go back here and let's move this. If I go to the heaven, you are there. If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there. I'm the wings of the dawn around the far side of the sea. Even there your head will hold on to me. You're always there. You're always there. You're always there. Always there. Always there. Always there. Okay, so for the first round of compression, I'm using the R comp. It's just it's an awesome compressor. It does it back what it's supposed to do. And uh, it's going to allow it to go get a little more heaven, tame. You are there. If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there. Okay, next up. On the wings of the dawn around the far side of the sea. Even there you have to hold on to me You're always there You're always there You're always there Always there Oh. 
always there to watch over me. Okay, so that's what it sounded like in solo. Always there to watch over me. Okay, we're going to use a little bit of some guessing there. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there. On the wings of the dawn or on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will hold on to me. You're make this set on top a little bit better by placing some beautiful madness over here on this um let's use a little bit of see now that mobs got me hunting down these waves plugins now I'm, they're all over the place yeah we're gonna throw some rvox on there Why did I not throw Arvox on here? You are there If I sleep beneath the ocean You are there On the wings of the dawn Around the far side of the sea Even there your hand will hold If I go up to the heavens, you are there. There it is. If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there. On the wings of the dawn, around the far side of the sea. Beautiful. Even there, your hand will hold on to me. You're Sort of like we did the parallel compression with the drums. This is going to be uh, something similar. But what we're going to be doing with this one is it's the blended track. So this is the first one that he sent me. Let me bring it back here. You are there. So I won't have to do really a lot 
to it to get it to sound different. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to actually help it to set that lead vocal on top by utilizing some of the tricks that we use around here. So let me bring this up here and this is me literally just hunting. I'm just hunting. Don't even know what I'm looking for. Just looking for something. Uh, but up, up, but da da. You know what? Actually, let's use this. Yes, vocal parallel. Whoop! What's that mean? Okay. Wow, that was nice. Uh, that plugin just made everything crash. Now, hopefully, that didn't just destroy everything we just did. Thank God for autosave. Woo! By the way, guys, if you don't have autosave enabled, do it for, ver for various reasons such as that one. Every once in a while, you got a rogue plug-in that hasn't been updated or something like that. Oh, look at that. It saved it right before we put that on there. Thank you, Jesus. It was all just a bad dream. Okay, um, but with that being said, I want to... This is still... We're still in the process of making this a vocal parallel track. So I'm going to go with something that I know isn't going to crash my computer. Um, little Ultra Boy. Love this plugin. And we'll go ahead and solo it so you can hear exactly what it's going to do. On the wings of the dawn, Rich on the far side of the sea. Even there your hand will hold on to me. You're always there. Okay. Yes, you're right. Save again. <laughs> And let's save as, let's overwrite our original project. Here we go. Just in case. And that's control S on the keyboard. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. Awesome. So just to real quickly, just to show you, I'm glad that actually that, that that happened because it shows, uh, for one thing, the power of cakewalk and the power of autosave. So if you go in here to uh, project, where is it? Playback and recording. Driver settings, devices. Da -da 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 -da. Advanced, here we go. Project, uh, preferences, advanced. And then you bring it all up into here. You get autosave. You can set this every one minute or every 10 changes. I've got it set from every one minute to 10 changes. That's kind of a bit much, but if something like that happens that we just dealt with, you always have a backup. So please use this. Okay. Woo, disaster averted. So with little Ultra Boy, I normally will put drive on that parallel. You have it right here, as well as the ability to mix in this effect. <laughs> If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there. So that's enough of a variance that I think it's going to make it sound better. If I take it off, this is what we got. On the wings of Enable. the dawn around the far side of the sea. Okay, so that's basically going to be like a cheesy-fied, true, but cheesy-fied choir up underneath the original vocal and we're just going to blend it in to taste. Even there your head will hold on to me. Right there. I heard you always there. You always Now something I can do that's kind of cool here is I'll insert a send to the short room and then I can even help to push it back a little bit farther
And then I can automate that to come in at certain times and give that doubling effect. Now, when he originally posted this, he actually was shooting for that doubling effect. So you are there. If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there on the wings of the dawn around the far side of the sea. Even there, your hand will hold on to me. You're backing vocals now to one bus so I can treat all of them at the same time which will then save me time uh, but I'm going to pan them from this bus as well so let's bring it back always there to watch over me starting a clip on the uh, starting a clip on the master bus so we're just gonna beauty of the doing it this way is now I can just literally select them all and move them down just ever so slightly and the mix is the majority of it's gonna stay the same Okay, so what I want to do is I want to figure out which which of these backing vocals is um, sort of the highs, which are the lows, vice versa. Okay, so they all sound pretty similar. Bring that back. Let's just go through that part only for a little bit here. There we go. Yes. So what I'm trying to do is those vocals that have lower registers are being panned, not hard left and right, but they're being panned 30% left and right. That allows some more of the low end information to enter into the center of the stereo field and then thus will allow us to hear it hopefully better. Makes it sound more natural. And I think I'm gonna do these 50-50. Beautiful. 
Okay, now let's do some proper EQ on these. Make sure they got some console emulation going on. By dipping out a little bit on the 3K, it allows the background vocals to set in the back like they need to be. So, And I'm going to go ahead and put Long Haul on these as well. This should push them back even further. Okay. And I don't have to do this but I'm going to because when you have the plugins, you're going to use them. You can put Soothe on and just leave it in as default and they'll sound better. <laughs> but we are going to change it to uh, some vocals. Maybe. Oh, I think I just locked my computer up. Okay, let's pause it first. <laughs> it's going, no, you're doing too much stuff at once. Yeah, it's literally just like froze up when I try to open that up. That's fine. We're good. We're just going to use the, uh, our ears then. There we go. Beautiful. Yep. Performance looks great. Not too bad. Okay, so I think that's going to definitely make them set back there better. Let's take a listen.
Beautiful. All right, we're going to put some finishing touches on it here uh, with this, and then it'll basically just be automation and then sending it off to our client and saying, hey, what would you like to change on this, if anything at all? So let's start it from the beginning here, from the top. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sleep beneath the ocean, That's too much. you are there. On the wings of the dawn around the far side of the sea, even there your hand will hold on to me. You're If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sleep beneath the ocean, you are there. On the wings of the dawn around the far side of the sea, even there your hand will hold on to me. You're all Okay, we got, um, we definitely got a few of the, the bugs lined out here, um, but we're definitely going to call this a good first pass. I think it's a, a good start. I'm still not completely happy with the lead vocal. I feel like there's still something else that could be done for this lead vocal. Let me narrow down on that again. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. 
I think it has to do with this other track. If I sleep the ocean, you are there on the wings of the dawn around the far side of the sea. Much better. Even then your hand will hold on to me. Hey, thank you so much, Eric, for stopping on and for signing up for a membership. Brother, I appreciate that so much. Uh, tell your friends about this. Tell your family about this. Have everyone hop on, join, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. But you have yourself a great day, and I'm wishing you a very happy new year, by the way. Do, 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 do. You know, I normally I normally do that, DJ, and I didn't do that on this one. You're right. I think that's the one area that I missed, and I'm going to go back and it initiate that and just let it ever so slightly touch some things there you're always there you're always there you're always there always there Okay, so I'm honestly I think that's we're at a good point now. I do I don't think that the the breaths in between the sentences is so bad that I need to cut it out. In fact, I think it adds to the realism, the intimacy of the song. So I'm actually going to leave those in unless the client says otherwise. Um, I keep calling him a client. The winner says otherwise. Um, but I think it's it's definitely come a long way, baby. Um, and then from here. We'll give it time to marinate, and much like um, Kev just said, or was it? No, it was Bubba. There comes a point in time when you just kind of, kind of back away and go, "Okay, this sounds good at this point." But if you just keep working on it, that's where you get into that. As he has, <gasps> sorry, so aptly called it uh, analysis paralysis, and it's very, very good. So it definitely does happen. So. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and call this Dunsky, and we'll send it off to the client, the winner, and see what he has to say about that. So I hope you found this enjoyable. We're going to go ahead and cover some of the questions that I've seen here in uh, the chat real quickly before we, we bail out. Uh, but while we're doing that, let's go ahead and do something that uh, we have to do because it's one of those times we're going to spin the wheel of awesomeness. Oh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Casey Kasem's back, and I'm ready. And I'm also out of breath, apparently. Or I'm just trying to sound super duper. Super duperty duperty. Whatever the word is I'm looking for. Let's spin the wheel! Wow. Casey was all over it. Nice. So today we have a little known fact. Interesting. Interesting. So today... <laughs> Every time we have these little known facts, I start searching my ring. I'm like, what can I tell that I can tell? <laughs> There's some stuff I probably shouldn't tell. Um, Casey got a contract enhancement. Um, thank you so much, Kev. I'm glad that you appreciated this. Uh, thank you all so much also for being here. Um, a little known fact. Let's see. I've already told you that my favorite ice cream is Rocky Road. Although it's a, a very close second, in fact, I eat more of it is just plain vanilla ice cream with chocolate syrup. So um, let's let's talk about, I think I told you about the time that I showed up to a gig and got shot at. Um, I'm not sure if I have or not. I think I told you of the time I fell out of a car going 40. Um, paper cut in the eyeball, we've covered that. Let's see. Um, okay, here's here's a cool here's a cool one that you did not know. This guitar right here. This is my my baby. This is the Squire Thinline Telecaster classic vibe. Okay. A guitar I've always wanted. And with my tax check several years back now. It's the first guitar I ever bought. 
And I know what you're thinking, but Robert, you've got guitars hanging everywhere. You've got guitars that we've seen on your channel that are in the closet. Um, and you would be right. But here is part of this little known fact. Years ago, I made the... As I'm telling this story, I'm, I'm realizing now I've already told you this. Um, but that's fine. We're going to go. We're going to go with it because evidently my. Uh, evidently, my Alzheimer's is kicking in. If you've if you've already heard this, just tune out now. Go to sleep. Go go somewhere. And um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> so years ago, my wife and I had just got together. We moved into a small trailer in Crothersville, Indiana, and apparently at some point in time bills got tight imagine that we were just getting ready to have our first child our son and our only son i should say not our first um, i do have a daughter as well but that's from my previous life she's the best thing that happened to me during my drug addiction days and all that stuff that happened back then uh, but that's not mine and my wife's child that's uh, a previous girlfriend so love my my daughter to death kinsey if you're, if you're watching, love you to death. You're still my pookie, even though you're 24. Um, but with that being said, my wife and I were going through it, and I only had one guitar at that time that belonged to me, and my parents and my grandparents had all chipped in and bought this uh, whenever God had completely transformed my life, and I was completely delivered from drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, all of it, in one day. And so sort of as... Sorry, trying to clean my phone off because my ADDs kicked in. <clears throat> so sort of as a, a uh, congratulatory gift, we called it my rebirthday present because I was, I was reborn into the family of God. Uh, they all chipped in and bought me this guitar. It was an Epiphone acoustic electric cutaway. Actually, I think I showed a picture of it last time I was on here. And it was the thing of the most value that we had. We didn't have a lot and um, we needed to make rent. And I was like, how in the world are we going to do this? So I began to pray about it. And I was like, honestly, the only thing that I can do is sell this guitar. Now, I had a guitar at the church that I was using that was much like this one here, only it was an American-made instead of a made in Mexico. Um, so I knew that one was always going to be there. So I thought, you know what? Okay, I say always going to be there, but it got stolen. So I can't. anyway, um, with that being said, uh, the point that I'm, I'm getting at is I had to sell that guitar. So I got exactly what we paid for the guitar. The guy didn't even open the case, drove down, paid for it. And it was exactly what we needed for our rent. God knows what he's doing. So he drove off with my guitar and I felt better as a husband, as a soon to be father and thought, you know what? I did the right thing, even though as hard as it was. Um, but if you're a musician, you know that it's very hard not having an instrument at home to play, especially when you come home from a hard day's work. You want to sit down and pick up your guitar and watch all of your worries fly out the window. And so I began to pray. I was like, God, if you will put a guitar back in my hands, I'll use it for your glory. You know that I will. And literally within the same week, we were walking into Walmart. Another gentleman was walking out of Walmart. We get to talk and I'm boohooing on his shoulder. He's like, hey, there's this guy in Greenwood, Indiana that gives away guitars to people that need them. I don't know if the guy's real, but here's this card. I'm like, I don't care if the guy's real or not. Give me that card. I take it, call the guy. Long story short, I end up with two guitars within two weeks, an electric and an acoustic. Just donated for free. From that time forward, I, I went home. I ended up giving one of those guitars away to a little girl that needed it, called him back up. I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. I, he was like, oh, no, you sold the guitars. I was like, no, it's worse. I gave them away, gave one of them away. Uh, he was elated. He was like, of all the years I've been giving guitars to people, I've never had someone actually give back, so thank you. Come back and get another one. From there, our relationship, this older gentleman in, in Greenwood and myself, has blossomed to where he's become like a mentor to me, and over the years, he has given me the Gibson Les Paul sort of knockoff. It's a court guitar. Uh, my good friend in Greensburg, Indiana, gave me this one. The one that's hanging in the very back, that was for a review that I just recently did. The acoustic was from the man in Greenwood. I, 
all of the guitars that I've got were given to me. This is the only guitar that I ever purchased. And that is all due to the glory of God. So thank you, Jesus, for helping me get a guitar back in my hands. And every time I've ever given a guitar away, in fact, I've given two in the last couple of months, I gave away an acoustic that I actually bought. Um, and then I gave away an electric that came to me as a review. And within a few short months, the acoustic and the electric have already been replaced. That's just the way that God works through other people reaching out for reviews. So by the way, I do have a review coming out shortly on this guitar back here, as well as two other budget options uh, that are kind of cool. One of them, woo, I'm going to have to be honest on that one. Um, so that's sort of a little backstory on that. I think it's really, uh, it's a great testament to the fact that if you put God first, then he will, he'll increase whatever you've done. So thank you all so much for showing up today for uh, trudging with me through this mix. I think we did a great job on it. It's come a long way. It's not completely done in my eyes, but as has already been stated, I need to sort of walk away and then I'll come back. So, um, well, thank you, Pena. I appreciate you stepping on. This is another first timer. Thank you so much. These first timers rock up in here. Um, but with that being said, uh, we are going to go ahead and end today's stream, but I want to give some shout outs real quickly to these individuals who have recently subscribed. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. And for becoming subscribers, you get a hearty thank you. And to those who have recently given, whether it is through Super Chat or donations or whatever it might be, thank you guys so much as well. And these chart toppers, I, I never thought I would see a day when this would happen. But you guys literally, literally rock. So without further ado, you know what I'm getting ready to say. Until next time, guys, we can... Oh, wait a minute. I almost forgot. Almost forgot. I did have a question from DJ. I don't want to pass it up. Because he said, um, Robert, has this ever happened? Have you ever sent a mix off to a client and they literally replied back and say, yes, everything needs changed? <laughs> um, actually, that has happened. There's been a... a a time a couple of times now where I've sent a mix off and they were like dude this is totally not going the direction that we thought it would go and I would say okay fine uh, let me try a couple more things if you if that's not gonna work for you maybe I'm just not your guy and that's totally fine to be able to say that as a mix engineer because you give your own personal sort of fingerprint on things and sometimes your fingerprint just doesn't match what they're looking for and that's fine you can either refer another mix engineer that you know sort of keep it within the family so to speak or um, just tell them, you know, you're going to have to find someone else. I'm sorry, I'm just not your guy. Refund the money and move on. It's no harm, no foul. It's actually the best way to do it. Instead of trying to struggle with something that maybe you're not going to be able to deliver on and spend months maybe even going back and forth until they get something they like and you've done something that you're not even used to, which sometimes can be a good thing, and sometimes it's better just to cut your losses and say, okay, I'm not your guy. I've had to do that a couple of times. So. But yeah, great question. So, all right. Now, until next time, guys, remember, we can dream alone, we can even create alone, but together, we can achieve so much more. God bless you guys.